Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the channel. Just wanted to go over some numbers really quick, then we'll get into how I found this product. So in the last 30 days, we actually went out of stock for a whole week, so the revenue is not nearly where it should be. We're obviously missing about $4,000 there. Um, but you can see in the last seven days, we've done $4,355 after coming out of stock here. You can see we actually do have days that are consistently over 500 nonetheless and 600. Uh, we did have a big day this week that was almost up to $1,200 in one day. If you average out the last week, it's about $620. That's how I got that number. But anyway, now that we ran through those numbers, just to show that I do actually have a brand impact that does those kind of numbers, let's go over and talk a little bit about how I found that. Now, if you do want to build your brand and start selling hundreds of dollars worth of products every day on Amazon, I would recommend picking up Helium 10. There will be a link down below that gets you 10% off and you can do everything we're gonna be doing today with just the platinum plan. Once we're in keywords, we wanna look for products that have at least 5,000 searches per month. That's just one of the keywords as well. There will be more keywords we ultimately end up finding. We want markets that we can actually scale in, right? I don't wanna waste my time creating this awesome brand and then just go somewhere where I'm only going to ever be able to make five, six thousand dollars per month in sales, right? We want to go somewhere where we can work up in the number of SKUs we have and optimize our product and eventually become a seven figure seller within that core market. So from here, we're going to go to monthly revenue and same thing. We want to see only markets that contain five figure sellers at a minimum. As far as categories go, ones that have the most enthusiast customers in them, we'll be going over that in a second. However, lawn and garden, the sports and outdoors, tools and home improvement, pet supplies, home and kitchen, and arts and crafts. We'll start there. First thing you're going to ask yourself is who is this person? Okay, who would search this? Right? Not is this a good product? That doesn't matter yet. Let's just sit back and think for a second. Who buys this? So steam iron for clothes. Can I come up with a customer that is an enthusiast that likely buys this and other things relating to it? and also buys from this market consistently? Do they have a disposable income that they can come back to my brand if they enjoyed what I created the first time and continue to be a customer, building their overall lifetime value for me? A steamer iron for clothes is a very generic product that I don't think people are enthusiastic about. Okay, it's more of a commodity. I don't think anyone is excited to steam their clothes. There are some people who that is an element of their job perhaps, but I wouldn't say they're an enthusiast, okay? So same thing with white candles. It's too broad extension cord, it's too broad. Who buys this? Anyone. If you can say anyone can buy this or get maybe more specific homeowners, right? Still, it's just far too broad. Canvas prints with your photos, flea and tick for dogs. Okay, dog owners, but still too broad. Now, when we get down here, however, we see soccer balls, we see baseball glove. Who is this customer? A soccer player or the parent of a soccer player, baseball player, or parent of baseball playing child. Now we can at least comfortably say who our customer is. Now it's not still very specific, but it's much more specific than some of the other ones. Let's start up here at baseball glove conditioner. If I come in here, just click view on Amazon, open that in a new tab, and let's go take a look at this stuff. So from here, we want to view the, the competition on Amazon to figure out if the current competition knows the secret of standing out just like you're about to, okay? So the secret of selling on Amazon, a lot of people think it's, well, it's a lot of things, really. There's no secret, but unit ec economics for one, making sure that you have profit left over on the table after all of your advertising, packaging, creating the product, sourcing the product, etc., and still offering a competitive price. Now, we can build a brand and charge a premium price. However, don't think that you can charge an insanely premium price. Assume that you have to sell somewhere around current competition levels. Now, consistent sales and search volume for a product that people actually care about and buy consistently, plus competitors that don't know the standout secret, which is just really, I like to call those people old competitors, um, That that's a good market and that's a good place where I would start in. So. That secret we were talking about, right? What is that? It's Well, it's that feeling you get when you look at a product. The example I always like to use is liquid death, okay? When you go to Whole Foods, you go to the grocery store and you're looking through the aisles, okay? And all of the sudden you see this next to all of the other seltzers. 
well. That kind of stands out, doesn't it? I mean, that's not loading in great, but we're looking in this, and we're looking at water, and, well, it would have been great if Liquid Death was actually in this photo. You know what I mean. It's that feeling you get when you see this, okay? So that's what our goal is, too. We want people to scroll, scroll, pause. Wait, what's this? Okay, now this isn't actually a good example. It's actually very boring and old, but that's what we want them to do, is stop and think, what's going on here? Okay, I need to click in here at the very least to read more about this, etc. So from here, you're going to open up X-Ray by Helium 10. We're just going to get a good idea of what the search volume for this term is. We can see that in black box, but also what the current sales volume is. Because like we said before, we want to see consistent sales. Um, and then also when we click into that sales graph, we would want to see that in all time. Now, it looks like we only have one year of data for the most part for this term. This is probably more seasonal than I would like. However... Right now, they're selling thirty to fifty thousand dollars per month. Not a bad business to run if you can count on every spring making fifty thousand dollars a month with one product. Not to mention multiple SKUs. So I wouldn't count that criteria too heavily against yourself, but it's just something to keep in mind. At least know what you're getting into. So when we're looking through here, we can see I don't even have to keep going. I can see the total revenue on this page is almost a million dollars. Now, granted, not all these things are relevant, so they're not all actually baseball glove conditioner. However, looking at what is available, ask yourself this, can I build a better product in the eyes of the person who's buying it? Okay, so not to you, I mean, this is, I would say yes, I can, I can build a better product here. If we use that liquid death example, can I stand out here? Can my packaging be far more modern, far more edgy, whatever that theme you end up going with is? And I would say yes. So we can use characters, like the skull on liquid death, we can use visualizations, well, there's no baseball glove anywhere here, right? These people aren't competing at a high level with knowledge of how to build a main image on Amazon. So I would say, yes, I could build a product here that I can probably count on doing at least the numbers that we saw showing up right here within the course of the next year, if I put my head down and got to work. So it's not that hard. We can see we just actually already found a product. And I'm saying this wholeheartedly, I think this is a pretty good idea because people are going to repurchase this, right? You can use it up. So from year to year, you might need it again. And it's not a great repurchase, right? You're not going to be subscribe and save signups, have sub subscribe and save signups or anything. People are going to buy this every month. However, they can become repeat customers or tell other people, other parents of kids who play baseball or other baseball players can share it with each other. Um, and if it actually works and they're getting new gloves and it's breaking them in perfectly, I'm actually a big fan of it then you can grow a, what I would call a raving fan in that customer base because people love baseball. It's America's pastime, right? So once we have that down, we're going to test our ideas via a mock-up main image. So what I would do is I'd take the new packaging that I came up with, get creative, go to freelancers, think of characters. Maybe the baseball is this scary character or a cool character, whatever the theme that you end up going with is. If it's very modern, go look at examples of brands, by the way, that are worth $300 million because of their branding. Go look at what their logos look like. For instance, commodity-based products like Black Rifle Coffee, Liquid Death, Bulletproof Coffee, all great places to start because it's just a very simple product inside. People aren't actually buying the product, so to say, they're buying the packaging more so. So I think that is a very important element of branding. You'll hear a lot of people say, oh, don't worry about packaging. Just make a product and list it for a fair price and, you know, make a better listing. I couldn't disagree more with those people. I think packaging is super important for e-commerce and physical product businesses. What I was saying, test yours, your mock-up version the illustration, get it 3D rendered, and take this one that we know sells $30,000 per month, and then head over to pickfoo.com. Now, I do have an affiliate link down below for this. I think you can get something like half off your first test. Basically, what it is, is it, it allows you to split test your ideas with real people. Okay, so you can say, which one would you buy? We can filter it down to maybe sports, people interested in sports, or even baseball players. Post this picture, then our main image as well that we've mocked up. Now, keep in mind, we didn't spend any real money other than maybe just the mock-up for $100, $200. So instead of getting yourself locked in, spending $5,000 to launch this brand, $10,000, maybe you just test it here. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, just go back to the drawing board and maybe just change something about that packaging that customers said they didn't like. It should really be a blowout, right? You should have most of the customers, 75% of them wanting to buy yours, not just 50-50, or of course not 40-60 or something like that. 
So from there, once you've, once you've mocked it up, you've tested it, and you've got the proof of concept that what you've created is truly better in the eyes of the customer that's going to be buying it, you're going to be heading over to source that product, or at least start to get an idea of your unit economics. See if this is feasible. Okay, we see, let's just say we had to sell it $15.99 to $19.99. That's the acceptable range for a product like this. Well, then in that case, we're going to want to figure out, well, what are the fees of this? What are the actual just associated costs of the product inside the bottle? And then what's the cost of the bottle? So I would head out and I'd get a packaging company here locally in the US, see what they can do that for. And then I would also get a quote from a local manufacturer first and then head out further and further but always start local. Uh, a great way to start local would be to use thomasnet.com, look for something like baseball, and then a lot of these companies might actually know other baseball companies that would make a product like this. So think of it this way, barriers to entry are good. They make it hard for new competitors who are good at selling on Amazon to enter that marketplace. So if your supplier is making, or if you find your supplier by making 100 phone calls and not just on Alibaba, that's gonna be, uh, a great way to reduce your competition and lock down a market, right? There's not going to be a flood of high quality sellers rushing in because you just took the, the next best idea off of this list and barely put any energy into it. Okay. So to summarize, we're going to figure out who that enthusiast customer is, baseball player slash baseball um, parent. We're going to figure out what they think is cool. So go to forums, go to YouTube channels, go to social media accounts and look at what type of accounts and what type of content these people actually look at and then make packaging for them. Test that idea with a PicFu audience. That's the reason that I'm selling the numbers that I'm selling right now is just packaging and presentation, okay? So you have to knock it out of the park with your presentation. $30,000 a month with two images, there's not a single lifestyle image. So could you imagine if you went into a market like this and made a real brand with incredible lifestyle images and infographics and amazing packaging. Um, I think it would be a blow up. So if someone go do this idea for real. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching until the end. Uh, as always, I'll see you here back on the channel for another one soon. Thanks so much, later.